wow, I do not want to end up like that guy. Today, I'm going to be surviving 100 days on a tribal island. There are both enemies and allies throughout this gigantic island. The problem is finding out who is on your side and who isn't. Will I be able to conquer what this unforgiving island has to offer? Or will I end up like our friend Bill? Before we get into the video, Bill let me know that only a small percentage of you guys are actually subscribed. I really want to hit 200k, and I need your help. So if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. It really helps me out and motivates me to make more videos like this. Also, really quickly, guys, this map was created by Forge Labs, so big shout out to him. I'll leave his links down below. Now let's start our journey to 100 days. Our journey begins on day one. I spawned in this jungle, surrounded by towering trees. As I looked around, I saw something pretty scary and couldn't decide what it was. So I moved away from it and decided to chop down some wood. After getting a bit of wood, I crafted myself a nice wooden pickaxe and started climbing this mountain to get stone. And then it started pouring rain. I continued climbing the mountain so that I could look over the land and decide where to go. Then I saw a small hut off in the distance. I climbed up to it and actually got some pretty decent starter items. But it looks like the guy who was here before me wasn't so lucky. I ventured down the mountain and spent the rest of the day working my way through the jungle. This thing is dense, and although I was traveling through here all day, I feel like I covered next to no land. Then on day two, I made it out of the jungle and saw what I think are dinosaurs? I actually ran from them and decided to go mining instead. Guys, I need armor. I happened to get some iron and crafted a pickaxe, an axe, and a shield. Perfect. Then I found this never-ending vein of emeralds. I continued mining for a while. Then I smelted some iron and checked out some of the crafting recipes for these weapons. These look insane. I can't wait to get a cool sword. On day three, I came back up to the surface and killed some of these weird looking sheep. And then I saw dinosaurs. I panicked and ran to hide in this mountain. Then after I collected myself, I felt ready to go fight one. This guy is called the Dilophosaurus and I definitely underestimated him. I stepped outside of the safety I had built myself and went to find the dinosaur. He hit me once and I flew up into the air and instantly regretted it. I ran back to my cobblestone hut and he hunted me down. He knew exactly where I was. I wasn't fooling him. Luckily, I was able to do a lot of damage and get him killed. He dropped a lot of things, including XP, some meat, and a ton of bones. Like this guy dropped an entire skeleton. I cooked the meat while I looked at what I can do with dino bones. I can make armor from it later on. This will be cool. I left the safety of this mountain to continue exploring. And then I found a tiger. Run faster guilty, run. And then I found this really cool structure. I decided to go inside and saw tons of raptors. I do not want to mess with those guys. So instead, I climbed on the roof and got a bunch of hay bales. This is a great food source. Of course I grabbed these. I finished my set of iron armor and crafted a boomerang. Yes, I have a boomerang. I killed a lot of raptors with this boomerang. And then it got stuck. So I had to go down and fight the raptors with my ax. This was terrifying. After the craziness of this raptor area, I decided to look for somewhere to build my base. I tried to take the top of this mountain, but this dinosaur let me know that he had already claimed it. So I continued on. As I was running, I found a village, an abandoned village, right there. I ran over to it when bam, I saw another name tag. Maybe I'm not alone on this island. I decided to go down and see who it was and what they were doing. I snuck up on him, and then he saw me. I took off as fast as I could. I even blocked off this staircase so he couldn't come after me. I have enough enemies here, and I don't need any more. After running for a while, I found a nice beachside area and decided to settle down here. I need a protective base that can keep me from dying to any dinosaurs or enemies. 
So on day six, I cut down trees until my axe broke. I got loads of wood. Then I spent day seven mining. I definitely need more ores and stone. I also found a cave. It's about time. And I found my first spider. These look horrifying. I hate spiders. Luckily, I was able to get a lot of materials. And yes, I have diamonds now. On day eight, I started building my house. I wanted to build something very tiny and compact. I don't know why. While I was building, I got a little distracted and built myself a diamond greatsword. Guys, look at this thing. This took six diamonds to craft. Yes, I know, that's pretty crazy. The greatsword does 12 attack damage and has a farther reach than any of the other weapons. I feel so much more prepared with this weapon. Then I continued working on my house and lit up the land with some torches. Since this house is pretty small, it only took me a day to finish. After I finished the house, I decided to go kill some dinosaurs. They do take a while to kill, but they drop loads of XP. I spent a bit of time moving my items into the house I built and then made a special place to smelt things because my house is super tiny. I'm not really sure what else I did today. I tried to fight this T-Rex and that didn't go so well. So I killed some other animals to see what they drop. I really badly need leather and sugarcane so I can start enchanting. Today I went to explore the ocean around me. It started off with me killing some fish and them dropping absolutely nothing. And then I saw this big boy off in the distance. I don't know what this thing is called, but nonetheless I swam up to it and started hitting him. I actually killed him pretty easily. He was too busy eating or something. And yes, it took a lot of hits, but I didn't take any damage. Sadly, he didn't drop anything. Then I tried to tame this cat, but he didn't want my fish. When I woke up the next morning, I noticed a bunny in my house. I think I'll name him Hops. I spent the entire day today going around killing a bunch of dinosaurs and random animals. I have no clue why, but at least I got a lot of XP. Then I started this nice little wheat farm and I used dino bones as bone meal. This way, I'll be able to make more bread because those hay bales aren't gonna last me forever. I was really liking my little area by now. It was coming along, and now I have a pet bunny. It can't get much better than this. On day 13, I headed over to this nearby swamp and cut down a lot of oak trees. Then when it turned dark, I was surrounded by mobs. Some I recognized, but others I didn't. First, I killed this zombie horse that dropped a slime. Then I saw a werewolf and a flying lion. I got really scared and just ran into my house and got poisoned. After healing, I left my house and killed the lion. Next, it was time to fight a werewolf. I approached him and man, was this thing tough. I have no clue how much health they have, but let's just say it's a lot. I was pretty scared of dying, especially when this witch poisoned me and I couldn't run away. Finally, I killed the werewolf and got an iron sword. Then I saw the strangest thing that I have ever seen in Minecraft. Inside of this tree was a strange creature, and I noticed it was coming to life with the blocks it was taking. In no time at all, a giant creature emerged out of this tree and was ready to fight me. He was built up with dirt, wood, and leaves. Every block around him, he would take and build himself taller. It took a little while, but eventually I killed him. I got a diamond block and some of these broken texture blocks. These are pretty cool. I noticed that bone armor is almost as strong as diamond. So today I crafted myself a bone chest plate. Let's be honest, this thing is pretty cool and I have loads of dinosaur bones. Then I crafted this super cool looking diamond shield and prepared myself to go mining. This thing took six diamonds to make and I absolutely love it. I think this will make enemies second guess if they really want to fight me. Then on day 15, I spent the day mining for obsidian because I need an enchant table and a nether portal. But sadly, I didn't find any. I came back up to the surface and headed into my house. 
Something didn't feel right. I noticed that Hops was missing. Someone has definitely been here. I looked around, but literally found nothing. So I headed back to my base. And then I spent the day doing some research on what weapons I should be investing in. Someone is definitely watching me and knows where I'm set up. First, I crafted these throwable daggers. Pretty cool, right? Then, out of nowhere, I found Hops. I built him a cage and then noticed a book in my inventory. It read, Hello. I'm sure you're wondering what I was doing and why I let your rabbit free. It was an accident. I'm a resident of the village just south of this house. I mean well and didn't intend on causing any harm, but clearly you seem to have other priorities. If you would like to team up to take on this island together, let me know. I would love some help since, well, I'm sure you know by now, this place isn't kind to people like us. I felt bad. I was pretty aggressive with this guy. So I decided to bring him a gift. I wrote him a nice note, left him some nice little treasures, and then headed home. The next day, the villagers showed up at my house. His name is Sword. And he has a pet dinosaur. I mean, come on, that is pretty cool. He actually showed me how to get my own dinosaur, and we went on an adventure together. This was a really great day. And now I know that I have an ally on this island. Today, I built Hops a nice little house. He deserves it. It's very similar to my house, so hopefully he'll feel right at home. While I was building, it almost felt like I was being watched. Maybe because I was being watched. A figure out in the distance dressed in full diamond armor was standing watching me build. I chased after him as quickly as I could, but was having a hard time keeping up. Eventually when I caught up to him, we had a bit of a brawl. This guy was doing serious damage to me. He had way better gear and weapons than I did. I decided to run away when my health was pretty low. Then, Sword and I decided to leave for a nice long journey to find some other tribes. We decided to leave our dinosaurs at home so they would be safe. And we were traveling for quite a while. We ended up splitting up. Finally, I came across a base. The people here were friendly, and I actually spent some time with them before running off. Then, after journeying for a long time, I found Rick. The guy who tried to kill me before. I climbed his mountain. I was hoping to raid him because this guy is super rich. But just as I was getting to the top, I was met by him and he started attacking me. I mean, I don't blame him. I was planning to rob him. He got me so low, like to half a heart. Thank God I had this water bucket. This saved my life. After this encounter, I ran home. I did not want to mess with anybody else until I had good gear. On my journey home, I saw Framed trying to tame this dino, and he didn't seem like he was having much luck. Then I found an amazing resource that I definitely needed, sugarcane. The next day was spent chopping trees. I need a lot of wood, and I'm completely out of it. Then I was jumped by this Komodo dragon. It poisoned me, but luckily I killed him. He dropped reptile hide and I can make armor from this if I want to. I went to my neighbor's house to check and see if he has an enchanting table, and lucky for me, he does. So I quickly enchanted my pickaxe, sword, and armor. It didn't have any books with it, so they were all base level enchants like sharpness one, efficiency one, and prop one. Then I headed back to my base, prepared a few things, and headed into the mines. I need more diamonds and obsidian. Lava is kind of rare in this world, so I was super happy to find this pocket of like five lava blocks. I was able to get quite a few pieces of obsidian and was very excited to be heading to the nether soon. Once I made it home, I put everything in my smelter, including a few stacks of cobblestone, so I'll be able to have stone bricks. Then I was very excited to craft myself this enchant table. I did my best to set up a little enchanting area, but it's nothing special. I don't have that many books yet, so I can't get super high level enchants, but that's okay. We'll get there. I spent the next day enchanting. I crafted myself a diamond chest plate and enchanted it. 
I also enchanted my iron boots and combined them a few times to get prot 3 on breaking one boots. Not too bad. Then I actually ran out of XP a few times and had to go kill some of these stegosauruses to get some quick XP. Thank gosh dinosaurs give so much XP. This helps me out a lot. Then I enchanted all of my tools and armor and got prot 3 on my chest plate, which is awesome. Oh, I also got efficiency 3 on my diamond pickaxe and then decided to head into the nether. There were so many plants and blocks that I didn't recognize. The first block that I broke happened to be a flesh block. Okay, kind of terrifying. I found another fortress almost straight away. The only problem is, how am I going to get to this thing without going through all of these poisonous mushrooms? I did eventually get to the fortress, and I killed some blazes and wither skeletons. I explored a lot and found a bunch of weird blocks and fungi. I grabbed as many of them as I could, in case they're useful. Then I found this strange altar thing. There were no chests here, sadly. I was hoping for some loot. I did grab some of these cool blocks though. I also found black apples. I'm really not sure what these do. I'll have to do some research. I explored the nether for a long time and grabbed a bunch of blocks. Then I decided to head back to the overworld. The nether is an overwhelming place and I definitely would like to go back to dino land. Once I was back home, I made this cool nether altar with some of the blocks I got. I'm not really sure why. Then I organized a lot of my things and did a bit of research on them. I made myself a nether wart farm. Because why not? You never know, I might be brewing some potions. I also planted these black apples next to my nether warts. I found out that these are actually sort of like golden apples, but not as good. I also planted these stagnites. Not really sure what these do either. After planting all of my farms, I saw this. What on earth is happening in this world? I headed over to Sword's base to see what was going on. But by the time I got there, there was nothing happening. So I ran back to my house and Sword was there waiting for me. He warned me about a mysterious man riding a dinosaur and told me that I should keep my guard up. The next day, I went around killing dinos for XP and seeing if I could find any clues of who came through here. I'm finally learning how to use my shield. It's pretty important. It saves you a lot of health. Today, I was kind of bored and crafted myself this diamond fishing rod. Yes, guys, I wasted diamonds on a fishing rod today. Then I forgot about this fishing rod and decided to enchant some of my armor. I was able to get protection 3, feather falling 4 on my diamond boots. I literally couldn't have asked for a better enchant. Now I have full enchanted diamond armor. I would prefer better enchants on some of my armor pieces, but this will do. I remembered my diamond fishing rod today and spent the whole day fishing. I was able to get some fish and then a treasure chest which gave me a diamond. One of the mods that we're using actually can give you really good items like custom armor through fishing. I noticed I have enough sugarcane for some more bookshelves. I just need leather. So I went on an expedition to get leather. I came across the visitor center and grabbed some extra hay bales and iron blocks. I saw tons of dinosaurs on this journey, ones I knew I didn't want to mess with. I did get a good amount of leather and headed home. When I saw this dinosaur egg, I decided to get up and close to it. I really wanted to grab it, but the parents weren't happy with me and decided to come after me. Looking back on this footage, what I did here was pretty awful. I killed the parents and took the egg back to my base. I'm not really sure what I can do with it yet. Also, I was really excited because I was able to kill this pterodactyl on my way home. This was super exciting because they're really hard to get a hold of. The next day was day 50. We are halfway to 100. Today, I was organizing and crafting bookshelves. All of my belongings are a mess. I also found a new type of dinosaur today and didn't really want to fight him. Oh, I also came across this scary lava ogre. Sword warned me about these, so I was cautious. I killed him and he didn't drop anything sadly. Today I decided to craft a sifter. If you guys don't know what this thing is, basically it allows me to sort through dirt and sand to get things like fossils. And I need something called a biofossil to craft an analyzer. Don't worry, you'll see what all of this is soon. It's kind of complicated. But basically today, I just sifted through dirt. I got some crazy things including amber, fossils, carrots, and random other pieces of loot. Then the next day, I harvested a bunch of dirt to sift through. Like I mean I grabbed a lot of dirt today. And while I was doing all of this, I noticed Sword was adding in a path to get to both of our houses. This looks so good, and it ensures that I can't get lost, which is always a good thing. 
Sword and I were in need of an adventure, and we definitely wanted to make sure that we were the only two inhabitants on this island, unless someone wanted to be an ally, but so far we haven't found that. So today we went out looking for bases, and we actually came across one. As we were traveling through this mountain, we saw light. We headed over to it. We fought off some dinosaurs and then got closer, but once we were in the base, we realized this wasn't another tribe. There was an abandoned car here. Guys, look at this thing. We found this super cool Jeep. This little cave area was so cool. It was filled with amber and crystals, and I grabbed some of them. I also mined some of these fossil blocks. Then we found a fuel pump and fueled up the car. We wanted to take it back to our base, but there was one problem. It's missing a tire. What on earth are we going to do? Well, Sword and I worked through it like we always do. We headed back to our camp, crafted a tire, and ran back over. Luckily, we weren't too far from our base. Once the tire was on, the car was able to be driven. Now, uh, how do we get out of this mountain valley type thing? Well, the only thing Sword and I could think of is to dig a tunnel from one point to the other and drive the car through it. So, we started digging. Now listen, if you look closely at my pickaxe durability, you can see it's not doing so well. So at one point, I did have to run back to the base to repair my pickaxe. And while I was there, I decided to craft Sword and I both diamond enchanted shovels. Gravel will not be slowing us down. Once I made it back to the tunnel, Sword was happy to get his gift of a shovel, and we dug for a long time. Finally, on day 57, we were driving the car through the tunnel. Actually, I was driving the car through the tunnel. Sword was in charge of navigating and making sure that we weren't too close to the walls. Honestly, I don't know why Sword wasn't driving. Who gave me the responsibility to drive? I genuinely don't know. Anyways, as we were driving, all of a sudden, the car exploded. Guys, I cannot make this up. The Jeep that we had just worked so hard to find exploded. But there is one good part to this story. It dropped all of the car parts. Now, I'm no mechanic, but I do think we can put this thing back together. Sword and I picked up all of our car parts and sadly traveled home in the rain. Then, we recrafted it at Sword's base. The next day, we drove our car around quite a bit. Guys, this thing is so much fun, and Sword did not let me drive today. Probably a good call. With one of the fossils I got from the base, I was able to craft an analyzer. I played around with this thing all day and got dinosaur DNA. Not really sure what this does, but I also wanted to experiment with this stuff called bio goo. But I needed an egg to craft it, so I ran over to Sword's base and grabbed one while he wasn't paying attention. Shh, don't tell him. I went home and crafted a culture vat. I have no clue what this thing does yet, but I put the bio goo inside and something started happening. Now all I have to do is wait. The next day, I went out looking for some eggs and milk for more bio goo. Kind of a weird crafting recipe. Anyways, right when I stepped outside, I saw this black dragon burning in the sun. I ran up to it and hit him, and he died. He dropped these two black hearts of darkness. What on earth are these? I'll definitely have to do some research and figure out what these things do. Then I got some milk from these nearby goats, but no eggs, sadly. I did kill some dinosaurs for XP, though. Then I crafted myself a full set of bone armor and enchanted it. This looks so cool. Then, Sword showed me the garage he built for the car, or as he says, garage. Comment down below who says it correctly. If you guys made it this far into the video, go comment garage on Sword's video. Let's confuse him. But don't tell him I sent you. He'll be super confused. <laughs> then, I went mining. I found a super large cave and got a ton of resources here. But there were some creepers in here that I had to take care of. Then, I grabbed all of the coal, iron, gold, and emeralds in this cave. I heard something strange and mined over towards it, and found this gigantic blue ogre. Thank God I was underground, because this guy does damage. After killing him, I found some of these zombie villagers, so I trapped them in the cave and was planning to come back to them to heal them. If we have villagers, we will be really set. But sadly, I forgot all about them when I saw another tribe driving around in a jeep. We weren't the only ones with a car. This is not good. Sword and I ran after him, but he got away. Obviously, we can't outrun a jeep. Then we saw this golem and killed him pretty easily. As I was running back to my base, I got met by a baby zombie. I made sure not to get filzed and ran back home. It's about time I craft a diamond axe. I enchanted it to efficiency 3 on breaking 3 and spent the rest of time today looking for leather. I want to enchant my weapon to be a lot better than just sharpness 1. So the next few days, I spent enchanting and XP gathering. 
I was able to get sharpness 4 on my sword as well as looting 2. I also have this sweeping edge book that I want to put on, but I need more XP. Then I found these T-Rex teeth in my inventory. Guys, I actually don't know where these came from. But I crafted a tooth dagger and oh my god, the attack speed on this is nuts. This might have to be one of my main weapons. I spent some time enchanting and got sharpness 4 on it. And I had an extra tooth. So I made sword one and gave it to him. We are so well prepared for any battles that might come our way. When I got back to my house, I made an item frame and hung up the T-Rex skull I got. Although it's nice to have, I would like to kill one on my own soon. The next couple of days were spent organizing. My stuff is a mess. I actually built myself this giant chest storage shack. It's pretty cool looking. And then I moved all of my belongings over. And not just that, I even organized them by item. Yes, all of these chests are labeled and organized. Pretty impressive. Then I decided to make my old house into the Dino Research Center. This is where all of my things like the sifter and analyzer will stay. But that means I need a new place to sleep. I have a cool idea, but first I need some wool. So today, I went out in search of getting a bunch of wool. And while I was out, I really considered starting a fight with this T-Rex, but I moved on. Then I headed home and smelted up all of the dino meat that I got and started on my new home. You might be able to tell that this is a tent. I don't know why, it just kind of fits in with the whole tribal theme. I tried to move some things inside to make it look a little bit more homey, and then I repaired my sword because it was really low on durability. The next day, I crafted myself a diamond crossbow. This thing does serious damage. Like, I mean, serious damage. I also had to craft these special bolts that go with it. It can't just shoot normal arrows. I also crafted a diamond boomerang to upgrade from my iron one. I enchanted both of them and got power four on my crossbow and sharpened three on my boomerang. Pretty good. I did a lot of enchanting today and upgraded some of my other tools, weapons, and armor pieces. With all of this new gear that I have, my next goal is to find a T-Rex and kill him. I have some really good weapons, and if I keep my distance, I know I can take one out. It didn't take long to come across my first T-Rex. I kept a vast distance between us and started shooting him. My shots were not hitting. Like, I mean a lot of shots, just literally not landing on him. Finally, one of them landed, and he was pretty mad. He roared and looked around for any potential enemies. I was hidden away, so he didn't see me. Then I spent around five minutes trying to hit another shot on him but he was just eating my bullets. Finally, after being impatient, I jumped down and decided to get him with my sword. He got me so low and I ran into the woods. I lost him. After healing and collecting myself, I went back into the fight and eventually he was defeated. This was a pretty big accomplishment. These guys are so powerful. Now guys, listen, I'm not gonna lie. The next few days, I was absolutely AFK the entire time. I don't even remember this. When I came back from AFKing on day 80, I was upgrading my gear. Yes, even more. And I went around getting XP for the next few days. I was able to get Archaeologist 3 and put it on my pickaxe. I have no idea what this does, but hey, it's another enchant. I also spent some time getting some higher levels of protection for my armor. Sword has built so much in this world. I walked through looking at it today. Then I tried fighting this dinosaur, but it picked me up in his jaw and threw me around. I was terrified and ran away. Then I planted these really weird trees and finished my diamond armor set. I decided this set is really good and I shouldn't spend more time working on it. The next five days were spent in the nether. I was in need of an adventure and I really wanted to go explore the nether a bit more because I was a little scared last time I went. I ran through all of the different biomes, grabbing a bunch of different blocks, and then I came across this temple. I ran into it, hoping there would be some loot, but there wasn't much. The builds were cool and all, but the best thing I got was some enchant tables and books. After my adventure in the nether, I finally made it home on day 90. I decided to go out and look for an elephant to tame, and I finally found one, but couldn't tame it, or at least I didn't know how to. Then out of nowhere, I found this stranded man walking around my land. I don't know who this guy is or where he came from, but I decided to take care of him. He didn't look like he was in great condition. His name is Benjamin. Sword and I are ready for a final battle on this island. We know Rick is out there somewhere, and we're going to find him. We got our best gear together today. And you may be wondering why we want to start a battle with Rick and his gang. It's because we are outnumbered. Sneaking up on them while they least expect it is our only hope. 
and of course, Sword and I want to be the kings of this island. And we got there on day 99. The fight begun. We were off in the distance kind of spying on them, and they didn't see us. Sword came up with a good idea of burning them out of their tree. So we both had flint and steels, and we lit their tree on fire. The tick speed on this server is pretty high, so the tree was going up in flames fast. They noticed pretty quickly, and were running around trying to find a way to get to us. Now let me just say, while all of this was going on, seeing Rick's name tag move around was terrifying. He also had his friend Alex with him, and I did not know what kind of gear they had. Eventually, Sword and I got some height on them and were hitting bow shots. I got really close to Rick a few times and was really terrified. Then Sword let me know that Alex died. I think he died to fall damage. And out of nowhere, Rick fell too. Now remember, this is hardcore Minecraft and they can't respawn. That means Sword and I are the new kings of the island. Sword and I traveled home and just as we were heading back to our base, an earthquake started. Guys, I cannot make this up. An earthquake split between our land, and one of the worst things I could imagine happened. Benjamin's house was torn into pieces. Although I wanted to see if he was okay, I knew I had to keep going if I wanted to survive. I was running from the earthquakes. Then I lost sight of Sword, which is even scarier. 